Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at how to do different sorts of abstract painting using a sponge and three colours of paint. So we're going to be looking at Mondrian inspired abstract painting, but also just having fun with texture and colour using the sponge and doing abstract painting that way. So two different ways, one method, and let's get looking at how to do it. Okay, so to do our Mondrian inspired paintings, sponge paintings, we're going to use three paints. So I've got a red, a blue and a yellow, um, which are the three colours that Mondrian often use, but you you know, you can use any colours that you've got to hand. Um, we've got a sponge, which we're going to cut up, a pair of scissors to cut the sponge with, black sharpie pen, ruler and masking tape. So I'll just place this all here. So these are the items that we're going to use and then I've got some pots to put the paint into and obviously your piece of paper that you're going to print onto. So to begin with, we are going to cut the sponge. So I'm using a sharp pair of scissors and they're using a dry sponge and I'm just going to cut this roughly into three because we're using three colours. Obviously mind your fingers as you're cutting. If you're not very confident with your scissor skills and get somebody to help, so you've got your three sponges there, which we're going to use to paint in. So now we're going to section the paper off. So I'm going to use some masking tape, but you could use um, washi tape. Or if you had a bit of cardboard, then you could place, say, a bit of cardboard here and a bit of cardboard here. Um, and then add something heavy on top and then use that as your resist. The easiest way is probably to use masking tape or washi tape. So... You're just going to create some really fun geometric um, kind of like squares and rectangles and just see what you can make with them. And I'm not being too precise. I'm not measuring it or doing it in a particular way, in a particular order. I'm just sticking it on. You also want to make sure that you don't push it down too hard because that might make it slightly harder for taking um for taking it off once you finish sponge painting it all so i'm just going to do a little one down here and if you can see here i'll see if i can lift it up so i haven't quite gone all the way to the end of there i have to excuse my nails they've already got paint on them from trying this video earlier so what i'm going to do is just stick another bit of masking tape over the top and you want to line the edges up so you make sure it's nice and flat and then that's in place there and then I might do another bit here, actually. Didn't make it long enough again, so I'm just going to tear the next bit off and then join the two bits up. And I might move this one up to here, actually. Okay, so you've now got your sectioned off paper. So I'm going to start with the lightest colour so we're going to go for the yellow and you're just going to squeeze a little bit of paint in now it's better to squeeze not enough than too much so if there's not enough you can always put a little bit more in so you can see it's just a little bit in there and then you're going to pick your sponge in and just going to pick up the paint on your sponge so i'm going to start with this one down here actually and when you sponge, you're just pushing the sponge down and lifting it up again. And what that's doing is putting the, pa um, putting the paint onto the paper. And it's absolutely fine to go on the masking tape, because what this tape is doing is it acts as a resist. So where the tape is, the paint isn't going to go. So you've done that one. And then before putting any more paint on, I'm just going to try sponging this bit here just to see if I've got enough paint. So actually, might be able to get away with that one without putting any more paint on. And then just trying to get rid of I've got cat hair on it. And then I might just do this one up here as well. So I'm just gonna pick up the paint on your sponge and then you're just gonna dab it up and down to create and actually what the sponge does as well, as well as putting the colour onto the paper, 
creates a really nice texture as well. You almost get like an ever so slight bubble texture. It looks really, really effective. So you could use this to create so many different looks. You know, if you were painting a sky, then you could sponge it on or you could do like a giant candy floss. So that's the yellow one done. It's now going to go into your red. So again, shake the paint up because you want to make sure it's nice and mixed. And then pop a little bit into the pot. So again, I've just, it's just a little bit in there. Let's see if I can get that in focus, just a little bit in there. So then put the sponge in. Pick up the paint onto the sponge. Now I'm going to go for the centre one, I think. And again, I'm going on to the masking tape and that's absolutely fine because the masking tape is blocking it from going into the next square or rectangle or whatever shape. And just keep going. And you're just building the colour up so you're not going to do it in one go, you're just going to do it gradually. It might be that you start to see little areas where you want to add a bit more colour to and that's absolutely fine. Come back and keep doing that until you're happy with it. I'll just do this one down here. So I'm really using, I really didn't use much paint at all. And what I'm doing instead is I'm using the sponge and repeatedly going over it to build up this colour. And you can do this in any colour that you like. So I'm using these three colours because Mondrian often used yellow, red and blue. But if your favourite colours are, I don't know, green, turquoise and blue, then do it in those. And that'll create a really, really fun, different effect that's also personal to you then because it's in your favourite colours. And then we do the final one, which is the blue. Put a bit in. sponge in. I've just wiped off a little bit of excess paint there onto the side of the pot because it just felt a bit too too much so and then you're just going to add this final colour and do that one there so I'm not going to fill in all of mine I'm going to leave uh, I'm trying to think which ones need this one white and actually I might see this is where it helps you might decide to section another little bit off so what I'm going to do is do another little bit here mm. yeah I might just do with that one actually and that's fine so the bit of tape that I just tore off I've now just stuck it back onto the roll because so I'll use that another project and that's the thing with mask and tape so you can kind of keep using it so you're just going to sponge this on okay and then you wait for that to dry before you do anything so you don't want to take the mask and tape off yet you might want to go and wash hands if they're like mine and they've got paint over them but before you wash your hands what you can do is use up any of the sponge kind of the paint that's left on the sponge so using a blank sheet of paper and i've got a bit of blue left I'm just gonna use it up so that there's nothing left in my pot. And again, I'm not being too precise, I'm just sponging it all over. And I don't think there was much left of the yellow, but I'll have a go. There we go. And this time we are slightly mixing the colours. And that's only because we're using this to make sure everything's used up and nothing goes to waste. And so actually when the yellow and the blue start to mix, you get a really nice, can you see the green starting to come through here? So as well as this very controlled Mondrian style painting that you've done, which is, you know, very grid-like and it's very blocked and regular, this is going to be much more abstract and freestyle and it's just having fun with colour and texture. And it's also been good at making sure nothing gets wasted. 
and then what you can do is you can once this is dried you can use this as a collage or you can do it turn it into a I'm trying to think a graffiti piece or you could use it to do um cut a handprint out from or you could do a pop art sort of style so that's using everything up so that nothing goes to waste so we focused on the mondrian and now we've also used up our sponge painting as well so i'm going to go wash my hands and then i'll come back and take the tape off right so once this is all fully dry and your hands are clean because obviously you don't want to be getting paint onto these white bits this is when you start to take the masking tape off now the trick to this is you want to have not pushed the masking tape down too hard onto the paper which is what I said at the start but you also want to go really slow and peeling it off because you don't want to rip it so just going really really slow and don't worry if you can see a little bit of paint there that's fine and you can reuse that if you wanted so you could stick it back onto the roll tape there and then if you wanted to do some more um, abstract and resist painting then you can so I'm just peeling these off one by one going slow is definitely what helps because then you make sure it's not going to rip the paper and you start to see these really crisp lines that have been created by having the masking tape there apart from this one where obviously I didn't apply the masking tape as well as I thought I had that's fine because when we use the pen this is when we're going to sharpen up these edges and that's what makes it look really crisp really modern so just gradually peel it all off So once you've peeled everything off, this is when we're going to do the sharp lines on it. So I'm going to use a Sharpie pen, and it's a black fine liner one, but you could use a black felt tip, or you could use a black crayon or a black pencil. It's just, I like how strong this line is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this reader up, and this is when I'm going to draw the straight edge in. And because I know here I can see a little bit of paint that went over, so I'm just going to move the ruler ever so slightly, like literally about a millimetre across, until I know that I've covered up if my lines weren't as straight as I wanted them to be. And you're kind of going to do this across the whole thing. So where we placed the masking tape earlier, this is where we're just going to draw our lines to really make these blocks of colour pop. And this is what makes it look really fun, really abstract. And it will really make your design stand out. So whatever colour you decided to use, that's when it starts to come through. So you just do it gradually and just build up. And what I'm going to do here is, because I don't want this line to go all the way through, I'm actually going to come down here and then stop when I reach a sign and then just come back here and again this is personal preference so it's completely up to you kind of how you want to do it and which shapes you really want to bring out so there's no right way or wrong way to do it it's just finding the way that works best with your design and each design is going to be different because it'll depend how you've put it together with the masking tape and what colors you used what size blocks you made what spongy yeast all of these things are what makes your painting yours So that is your Mondrian inspired abstract sponge painting. But remember, we also had a go at doing more general abstract sponge painting. So you can really have fun playing with sponges, paints and creating a whole variety of abstract designs. So 
have a go have a play with color and textures and let me know how you get on and i'll see you soon for another video bye